I leave the floor to Ana Luisa Texera, to Silvia Elena Venturini, and to Natalia De Silvia Ruda. The talk is about woman leadership in mapping riverside community in the Amazon forest using OS. The floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So um, we will start, but before we start to talk about the project, I just want to thank the institutions and partners that made the development of this project uh, possible so far, and they are representing these logos here. So a little bit about ourselves. Ana Luisa Teixeira is the president of YGEL, Youth Mappers Brazilian Chapter, and a National Geographic 2021 Young Explorer Fellow. She is conducting her master's at uh, the Federal University of São João del Rey. But Silvia Helena Venturini is an associate professor at the Department of Geosciences from the same university. And uh, I am a graduate research assistant at Knowledge Exchange for Resilience at Arizona State University. So the aim of this presentation is show the experience of the Brazilian Youth Mappers chapter Unificar Ações e Informações Geoespaciais, YGEL, in partner with Centro de Estudos Superiores de Tefé, Universidade do Estado do Amazonas, within mapping riverside communities in the Amazon rainforest. So now I pass to Silvia. Thank you, Natalia. Well, in Brazil, there, there is option date to do map use, uh, land use, sorry. Uh, but these data um, are not good to represent small areas. Uh, specific is the Amazonian state, the communities, and traditional peoples and the uh, small cities. Uh, the problem between the geographic and cartographic scale is always, always present in the mapping in Brazil. Because uh, it is expensive to buy uh, good images and to go uh, field work. Uh, if the investment is in, for the investment for mapping on large scale, the area represented is will be small. If the investment for uh, mapping on uh, small scale, uh, the area represented will be big, but I can't represent um, details. This um, some uh, agencies um, that map in uh, Amazonas, uh, but the scale uh, are not good to represent small areas. So uh, the open street map um, it's a good solution to the problem of uh, mapping the cities or small spaces. Uh, this uh, area is a city, the first city before this project started and after the project started. Um, before the fair, uh, I not, was not in the database. Now I can find uh, data about the fair, a lot of the basis day. Here um, have some databases. I can find the uh, data about the fair and the, about the communities in Interfe. Uh, this project has had the support 
everywhere she maps. And uh, uh, to talk about this, I give the floor to Natalia. <laughs> So I, before we, Ana Luisa, tell you more in detail the project, I just want to take a step back and zoom out a little, a little bit to discuss something that is that cross every field and also can see uh, gender gaps in geospatial fields as well. So maybe you already saw this slide in other youth mappers presentation. I want I wanted to repeat this slide here because even if you can see improvements. We still have a lot to do, right? And when you talk about OpenStreetMap environment, there are a couple of different studies that give us different numbers, but we can estimate that from two to eight, maybe stretching to eight percent of OpenStreetMap contributors are women. And so it's very important when you talk about create collaborative, participative map, and you can all, we have to also think about how to create inclusive communities. And this is why in Youth Mappers, we uh, have activities that are planned and uh, we have the average maps activities that uh, we try to engage growth and women and the broader community to through leadership, fellowship, professional development, help the chapters to organize in map, mapping campaigns. And you have the regional ambassadors working directly with local chapters to help them focus more on gender related problems. And as Sylvia mentioned, it, this project had in its initial phase uh, support from the Average Maps program. I am a former Average Maps regional ambassador for Brazil and Colombia. And the project received a little, uh, support from Average Maps due to its women leadership role and goals of empowering young women in geospatial, geospatial and technical fields. So a little bit about um, background on gender and forest in the Amazon. When you talk about Amazon, we are talking about traditional peoples and we can talk about indigenous, we can talk about rubber tappers, cheese net workers, and also riverside, migrant and semi urban communities. This project is focused in riverside communities and um, these groups and communities, they actively manage the Amazon rainforest for their livelihood and as an essential component of their socioeconomic status and even as an spiritual life culture. So the collective nature of forest territories controlled by those Amazonian communities um, con constitutes a contest where not all members have guaranteed secure access and control over land. So the decision making process at the local level are essentially influenced by proper rights and power relations, such as gender power relations, because we can see a persistent and widespread gender inequality in Amazonian land entitling practice due to male preference in inheritance, male privilege in marriage, in the distribution of land, through government programs and inequality in the market, both in individual private lands, but also in communal lands. So women are at a risk of marginalization if they are unable to voice concerns that affect their life, livelihoods and well-being. So literature and background about gender and forests are very limited and uneven, so we know that we cannot generalize. But however, we find some common characteristics related to gender uh, relations in the Amazon. We can uh, find a strong community identity that deflects attention from gender inequality. Uh, the communal interest in securing the community's collective, collective lens is a priority for everyone and even for women. So women are discouraged to discuss internal gender inequalities. In this can even be seen as a threat for the entire community. Also, we see a patriarchal culture value that define the division of labor by gender in public and private sphere. And this also extends to land titling, as I mentioned. So ownership rights usually go to one of the representatives of the house, and usually is the main and leaving women without ind independent and autonomous property rights and not even representation in decision making. 
So we see also a division of labor by gender associated with physical spaces and areas of activity, for example, among riverside communities, the production and marketing of forest products are controlled by men, leaving women with uh, the taking care of small animals in most of the domestic activities. So we have women's productive work uh, less, of, less visible and uh, more associated with family livelihood, as I mentioned. And also we can see a geographical isolation of many forest communities, making it more difficult for women to take collective actions and limit access to social service and other benefits of citizens. So it's very important to be aware of the spread existing forms of discrimination and disadvantage to transform gender inequality instead of reinforce it. So with this, I will pass uh, to Ana Luisa, then she will tell you the process and results from the project. Thank you, Natalia. So in this way, that map, that a map is the image, is a representation that contributes to dialogues in a socially constructed world, map them uh, and reverse the invisibility of these communities is guaranteeing them the right. So to start mapping these communities, we saw that have that have that there, there were little geospatial data about them in science literature and on the internet. Uh, besides that, representing communities in Amazon, it's not a, a easy task, as Natalia said, because first, we have a wide demographic dispersion of communities in all Amazon, high causes of satellite images that, uh, that shows the, this community, uh, uh, images with good resolutions are so expensive and free images uh, have a lot of cloudy. Uh, we had uh, isolated the space arrangement in the middle of a forested landscape, and it's so difficult to find these communities in this landscape. And in the end, difficult in transport and communication in the most of the parts in Amazon. So, to, in the first stage of our mapping, uh, the group mapped 95 communities. Um, and in North OSM and perform the temporal analysis based from two images available in OSM, Maxer and Bing. And we did some observations about the surroundings uh, of the community, for example, if uh, there were agriculture. And the most difficult that we, we had on this step of the, the study uh, was the difference in available toponyms in our databases, Brazilian databases. So here we have a map uh, with the dispersion of community interfere, our study area, and a chart that contains the difference uh, from the difference in buildings of six communities in, in both images this available in OSM, Bing and Maxer. And from it, it's possible to see that communities are in constantly change. Uh, because, for example, uh, of the changes of the river levels and other facts uh, that uh, that happens in the month. So uh, from this difficult to find all buildings in the CFED because of the territorial extension, uh, we decided to register areas in host task manager. Uh, we had in all these three projects, 90 contributors and more 10,000 uh, buildings, including the city of CFED. After that, to validate and put information about this building in OpenStreetMap, uh, it's, uh, it's crucial that local contributors put this type of information. And uh, it's at this stage, the Everywhere she Maps, uh, the program, uh, Everywhere she Maps program was so important. Uh, the program financed a, fi a field work uh, for recognition and contact with uh, local residents and also financed the internet for two human uh, students who live in Tefé. Uh, this, this type of, uh, of finance that facilitates contact with the, this person, the, these girls, and the development of research that you present below. So the first research we, we developed together uh, was the investigation about toponyms uh, of each community in Tarara Island. Uh, it's an island be, uh, near to Tefé. And because of these, uh, because of the people who live in Tefé, there were possible to, to participation of local residents for the validation of community toponyms. Uh, it's possible to, to do some interviews with locals in Tefé, Street Mark, 
And in the, in the end of these, these interviews, these conversations, it's possible to comparise uh, some databases to, to validate these toponyms. So, oh, <laughs> here we have a map that shows all communities in the entire island that we, we, the project allowed us to, to validate the names. <laughs> so, after this, the, the group focuses on another research in a community of São Luís do Macari, where Paula, uh, one, the, well, one of the girls uh, funded by ASM program, was born. This community is moving to another place, little by little, due to the intense hydrological dynamics of Solomon's River, and which erodes the margins of the community, after I will show some photos, called Fall Lands in English, um, Terras Caídas in Portuguese, and in the local local talks. Uh, in this map, it's possible to see the two places that the community uh, is currently during the process of migration. Oh, yeah. Yeah, please. So this chart shows uh, the measured distance from the community to the bank of the river during the years um, 1986 to 2019, uh, and was created by satellite images. It shows that in this period, the community lost about one kilometer uh, of land. And in a conversation with a local, he said that before this period, the community lost our, had already lost another kilometer. In 2090, the community lost the only Masori beauty that have in community, the school, because of the fall land. So we have some photos about this, this phenomenon and, this, and the school. So, uh, because of this frequent phenomenon, the residents in their wood homes are moving gradually to another place uh, in the island, uh, inland. Uh, so, this is a photo uh, take that shows the community in the banks of the river uh, that is being er eroded. And you can see the, the erosion, no margins of the community. So, and this is a photo taken in the community in the banks that shows where the community is moving inland. And you can put them out of there. Yes, here is the, the new community. So, finally, we brought some photos of the Tefe way of life that the project allowed us to experience. Yeah, please. And just to reinforce, it's very important financing mapping projects that reverse the invisibility, consider local knowledge, and empower human leadership in programs. Thank you for thank you for what you want. Thank you so much for your presentation. We have one big question with three questions, but I know that you already partially replied to the question, so maybe you have time to provide more detail because I believe that every case is particular. It could be very interesting to discover more. Uh, they asking if uh, um, does the mapping the communities make them more vulnerable in any way, for example, for violent settler loading companies where they know where to find the villages, so it could be there's a risk. So they are asking if uh, taking in consideration that uh, do you find a balance is uh, overwhelmingly positive and does the villages decide together if they want to be on the map or it's how, how this process work? That is not dangerous about this. Uh, this uh, region is very hard to, to do mapping. Um, how can you say names of the public? Natalia helped me. <laughs> but, <laughs> Very specific. <laughs> what Professor Silvia is saying and she showed in some way in her slides is that not even official institutions have detailed map about these communities. They, before it starts the project, they were already in contact with a local university. They were in contact with the community. One of the first things that they ha they did was go there and talk with the local institutions. They had no map, no data, and so they can say that there is they are not putting danger in the community to making them invisible. And instead, they it's good for them because, as Professor Sylvia mentioned, 
after they mapped on in open on open street map the community they start to see in other cartographies official cartographies the community so it means also that those official governments they are using open street map in some way oh um, that is one community moved and the the public argo doesn't know where uh, there isn't information about this community okay so about the maybe the you don't touch completely the, the part of the question related to how works being who decide that to the people to be on the map there is some kind of issue show that there is a a discussion for the store the autonomy of the places but how do you choose which villages should go from before on the map how, how did you work so field work in this kind of territory is very complicated you really need local contact and the decision of these specific communities because uh, Ana Luisa mentioned that two students from that area that study in Pepe, they are from this community. So this is why, because the girls, they were able to bring them to there, organize everything. Uh, one issue was internet and part of the funding was to charge their cell phones. They could then add detailed information. And when they had a chance to go the field work, they were they were with the girls, so it was very important to have this local content. It's because of this, they are from that. You want to ask something? Okay, so thank there are some other questions here in the room. Is the project over now, and do you plan, for example, to map the boundaries? Uh, and I would like to know about the context is part of a uh, part of uh, it's administrated by the FUNAI or some, something different? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and uh, because of the project, uh, we are now doing some some research more. How can I say? The deepening research, and the deepening research um, of with the girls and one girl, for example, uh, intend to do the master degree in the final of this year because they she have this contact with the the research and because of this contact with it, with all the groups. So. And also, uh, they train the local planners, let's say urban planners from the, the city, and they are using OpenStreetMap to complete the project in other communities. And uh, they are also planning to conduct on future field work and to, to go to other communities that were not taken in consideration in this first phase. So thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation.